So I'm often asked, what are the top mods that I would recommend if you wish to get into modding your game City Skylines? Well, this is my top 10 list, although I'm being a bit flexible with those numbers. Some of the numbers include more than one mod, a couple of them include four mods. So you're going to see how to make your city look beautiful, cams that I use, anarchy mods, network props, tools, all sorts of things. So sit back, grab a cup of tea, and let's dive in before we hit number 10 with some quality of life and necessary mods that you're going to need to make all the other mods work. So a couple of these mods are prerequisite mods to make other mods work. That is the Harmony mod, the Prefab Hook mod, the Patch Loader mod, and the Extended Managers mod. You will find a link to all of those in the description below. There is also the FPS Booster mod, which just gives you a couple of options. If we just jump into the options here and have a look at FPS Booster, you can set a limit on your FPS. And you can also save if you're perhaps working on a laptop, uh, depending on which menu you're in, if your game is paused, if you're not even looking at the game, it's lost its focus, you can drop the FPS, save some battery and cool your laptop down. There's also the loading screen mod revisited, which gives you some excellent reporting tools. If you open the directory, uh, once you've loaded a save game, you'll have lots of HTML files in there that you can have a look at for each of the saves that you've opened that will tell you whether you have any assets that are missing from that city and with some links so you can uh, click on them and reload them, uh, subscribe to them again. Some good options on here and also when the game loads, it will give you some extra options uh, to look at as well. Okay, here we have the screen for the loading screen mod. Uh, you see you can get some extra information on the right hand side over here which is quite handy uh, we have a list here if there's any problems with any assets or anything like that it will come up here um, but this actually really helps the game to load much better i mean the city i'm using the asset list i've got my system memory you can't see it is now up to 97 percent 96 percent it's dropping down slowly but this loading screen mod revisited really helps with that then we have the compatibility report mod. Um, we've got reports that you can open here and look at. Definitely worth getting. It will help you get to the bottom of any mod problems that you've got. When you open a report, HTML is a nice easy one to look at. It will tell you whether you've got mods that you need to get rid of, replace with other newer versions. Really, really handy. Uh, quality of life, we have the unified UI mod here, which is this little box you can see up in the corner. Lots of other mods put their icons in here, so these icons aren't filling uh, the limited real estate that we've got at the bottom, so I would definitely get that one. Uh, the picker mod, which is fantastic, this one here, I've got it set to T. So when you're in the game, if I wish to build, let's say, more of these roads here, I could either go normally, go into the menu, go into rural, find the road, or I can just hit T, click on the road, and I've immediately got it. Uh, or it could be hit T, click on this road, and I've automatically got that road. Works with anything in the game. It works on, let's have a look, buildings. There we go, so we've got that building there excellent quality of life mod and then finally the better toolbars mod so that will make your roads there you go be sorted a little bit better here so there's the better roads mod the better education tab which will make it look like this and split up your education options the better healthcare so that splits up your healthcare death care elder care and your recreational care and then finally the yet another toolbar mod uh, if we go down here, that's what makes this look see-through. Um, it can also expand it, can do all sorts of things. If I press Alt-Q, there we go. So we can, how many rows we're going to have. There we go, make it bigger, smaller, whether it's darker, whether it's transparent. So just some quality of life mods before we dive into our top 10. So let's do that right away with number 10. Okay, so at number 10, I have a group of one, two, three, four, five mods that I am grouping together as visual mods. That is what makes the game look the way it does, and not perhaps the way that it looks like on your computer if you're playing in vanilla. So let's start off with the first one of these, which is Theme Mixer 2. So you can see I've got a little icon down at the left-hand side here. That brings up this menu. Lots of different options in here. 
but you can download pre-made themes from the workshop and you see you've got a big list on here i'm using lavianti 2 if i just click on this you can see how it changes how the game looks so that is a start to using theme mixer 2 is to pick a theme that works for you uh, the next shops and down is the terrain you can change every single texture if you just click on one of these if you have a load of themes you can pick a texture from different themes let's go on over to the cliff texture which you can see here we've got the one from lavianti but you can mix those together look there we go and that is the start of putting together your own theme. And as you can see, you can go through every texture in the game and change that. Lots of other options here. The video would be hours long if I went through all of them. But if you start playing around with it, you can see how it works. Uh, next one down here, you can change the water. Then you can change the road textures. Again, it works in the same way. Color correction. So this is where you would select your LUT. Um, I have a whole load of LUTs included. And again, as you go through these, I'll just scroll through. You can see how it changes the look of the game as well. So you can mix and match those together uh, in a way that you enjoy. And then at the very end, you've got mixes. You can name your mix. You can save it. And I've got a whole load of mixes saved down here for various cities and cities from a long time ago and tests and all sorts. That is a very quick look at Theme Mixer 2. And to go along with this, I also have Relight. Now to open Relight, it is Shift, Alt and L. And this little box pops up here. And again, you can adjust all of these settings with little sliders here, change how your game looks. And once you've got it set up how you want it, you've got your presets. You can see some of the cities and maps that I've looked at in the past. So I can load or delete those as I wish. There's my UK one, there's New Zealand. Uh, Mississippi T should be in here somewhere. There it is, USA. Yeah, I had to scroll down to find that one. So that is a very easy one to use. And again, along with that, we have Render It as well. Let's pop that up. So again, you can make profiles to save. Now, this is basically how the game renders in the background. You've got settings to do with lighting, textures. There's a whole load of drop-down boxes here. And pro post-processing, you can see how i've got mine set up if you want to try and make it look the same as mine and this one i don't think i've actually changed uh, any of these but i'll very quickly scroll through those options in case you want to copy any of those and my lighting is set up like that that will change depending on your lut and your theme that you've chosen then in the advanced tab so basically setting this up the way that i've got it will make the edges uh, very sharp this is how i get my high quality look i play in 4k as well but this is how i don't get any jagged lines and things like that so again i'm just going to scroll through this really quickly feel free to pause if you wish to copy any of these and i will put a link in the description below as well a collection to all of these and also what theme and lut and everything i'm using in this city then there's also a way of changing what the sky looks like if you go into our options, and we go and go down to Cube Map Replacer. This has got built into it a certain amount of cube maps, which is basically what the sky is made up of. You can download some other ones as well, and you can pick one and change it. Let's just wait for that to load. That was called Overcast. We can see there's less blue in that one. Some of them are more pronounced than others, but you get the idea with that. You can find loads of them on the workshop. Nice! And then finally, in this section of number 10, is the mod Daylight Classic. So if we go back into here again, Daylight Classic, look at the colour around the outside of the city. If I turn all of that off, that is what the game looks like. I mean, don't forget, I've got some LUTs and themes. But if you want your classic LUTs, classic sunlight colour, classic sunlight intensity and sun position, it takes away that sort of extra hue that there is sometimes in the game. Okay, now we're going to look at camera mods at number nine. And there's three mods that I have put into this section. The first one, which is fantastic if you're recording uh, videos that you want to put on the internet or for your own benefit or whatever, is Cinematic Camera Extended. Hasn't been updated for a long time, but it's still pretty pretty much works 99% of the time. So let's say you want to record a nice uh, float through our city. We'll go into free camera mode while the cinematic camera extended mod is open and we will get the camera where we want it. And now I've got my plus key on my numpad, which is going to add a new step. And I'm just sort of going to move through here. One, two, three and 
four. There we go. We'll come out of that camera mode and we can see it's added the four steps down here. Um, you can then jump to each of those steps so you can check it out and then you can press play and that will nicely go through those steps. And once it's finished, it pops open again. And then you can adjust uh, the length of each of those in seconds. So I normally might put that around about 10. This middle one I don't change and this last one I don't change. I normally leave this all on auto. I will drop this down to half speed. If your machine struggles, go FPS 15. You can tick that one there. Um, and then you can speed up the footage later. But normally this is okay for me. Then I would press record. Then I would press this button here. And that will slowly slide through. Make sure you turn off your automatic uh, save mode in the game so it doesn't uh, mess around with your recording. And then once that's finished, you've got a nice little time lapse. So that's the first camera mod. The second one is called Acme. Okay, so let's jump into our options. Go to Acme. And you've got Alt-C will give us a panel, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. And Control-Tab will put us into free FPS mode. Again, lots of different options that you can change and things. And over here as well. And map dragging options there. But let's just jump in and look at Alt-C. So there we go. So that will change the camera position, but also how the camera works when you go into FPS mode. Control-Tab. And there we go, we're in FPS mode. So now we can fly around. So I'm pressing W to go close. And you can zoom right in, close down like this, and get a really good view of your city. Actually, I think that screen that you saw pop up was from the third camera mod that you can use, which is first person camera, which is just this little one here. Because if we press tab, yeah, we get that on the screen at the top. But it does a similar thing. So I would perhaps pick, always does that weird thing when you go back to normal view. Pick which camera mod works for you. Uh, both of them will happily work with cinematic camera extended. But again, we just turn these options off here. And we do tab. So now if you press record, you can do a nice first person sweep through your city. You can also use it. Uh, to follow other vehicles or people around your city. So let's pick this police car. And let's move that over so I can click on it. There we go. We're now following that police car around our city. Excellent. Right, that was number nine. Let's jump in to number eight. So at number eight, we have what I will call the anarchy section. That's prop anarchy, tree anarchy, network anarchy, and the move it mod as well I'm going to put in here. This is all about bending the buildings, the props, the networks, the roads, everything you can see in the game, bending it to your will. So again, if we go into our options here, we'll start off with Network Anarchy. So that's the one that makes the little guy at the top here. If I press Control A, makes him go fiery like that. So you know you can now place buildings where they may not have initially been able to go. Uh, there's lots of other options again in here. Once again, I will show you how I have mine set up. Um, but that is an excellent mod. Um, for yeah, placing items in the game. Uh, we've also got, uh, let's go down here, Prop Anarchy. So that comes with Prop Snapping, Prop Anarchy, increasing, de decreasing the size. Uh, it also includes these built-in functions. So these are mods perhaps you might have had in the past, but now you don't need anymore. One of them being Prop Line Tool. I'm asked all the time about that. So if we just pick a tree... There we go, everybody's favourite. And down here, toggle straight mode. And now I can place those in a row. I can place them in a circle. I can place them in a wiggle. You know, all of those sort of things. The prop anarchy allows you to do that. And you can use these options down the bottom here. This middle one here, tree anarchy, prop anarchy. You can turn that on or off. And then you can place trees. So with it off, can't place trees on there. With it on, I can pop some extra trees. Uh, on top of here so finally in the anarchy section we have the move it mod that is this little symbol down here it's also bound to the m key for me so now i can pick any item and i can move it anywhere i wish in the game that includes all the buildings all the roads let's have a look so you're trying to set up roads exactly how you want them we can move them all around and as you can see there are shortcut keys so i've moved that over there i have control z as undo so that will snap back 
Um, you also have the ability to reset buildings. Here we go. We have this industrial building here complaining about not enough workers. We'll put the move it mod on, select that, and I have control R to reset. And it's reset the building and it doesn't have those problems and issues anymore. And that will work also with buildings that have multiple colors. If you're trying to get a particular color, use the reset option and it will scroll through the versions of that building. So we can see with these mid-century modern buildings, there's different versions of it, different trees. Let's have a look at another one. There we go. And we can see it's going through the different options that are available Again, you can see how I've got mine set up, but we can see some of the controls down here. So I've got Control Z, Control Y. Copy is another good one. Um, and down here, Control R for reset upset, uh, objects. And down here, align things to terrain heights. That is also one that's worth using. But for instance, I wanted to copy this building. Turn the movement mod on, select that. Control C. I've now got that building. On my mouse and i can pop that down there we go hold the right mouse button turn it around and i can now place it down wherever i like excellent and as you can see down here lots of different options this one is single selection this one is marquee selection so you'll sort of draw a square over the top you can of course change what it is that you want it to grab so as default it grabs everything if i double click on trees only trees is selected now it's only selecting the trees that are here. Uh, again, you can change that to nodes. So right click to deselect. Now it's only selecting the nodes. So you can see how that works. You can also use the picker. Uh, if you want it only to pick a certain item. So I only want to remove these bushes. So I'm going to use a little picker, grab that bush. Now it's only picking that variety. Now if I do the marquee selection, so there's some of those under the roads that you can't see, but it's skipping all the trees, skipping all the nodes and only selecting those bushes. So if I wanted to, I could now bulldoze those. There we go. And that would remove them from there. This option here is copy, although I've already got that uh, set to a key binding, but you could do that. So you could select that building there, click copy, and that will give you another version of it as well. Also, if you want to line it up, you see the mouse is sort of moving it around. I might end up placing it in the wrong place. Hold alt. And you can see it's now snapping to the grid. If we just line that up, there we go. It's snapping up against the road. That is toggling. Let's come out of that. That's toggling this option here. So you can force it on or you can have alt and it will turn it on and off. There we go. As and when you need it. And then finally, this one here, which is follow terrain. That is really handy if you've got lumpy and bumpy terrain and you're placing items and you want things to follow the uh, terrain. So with the Anarchy mod, you now have complete control over what is going to be placed where and how it's going to be placed, what it looks like. So now let's go to number seven with our collection of mods to really tweak the way our networks and roads and everything look and work. So at number seven, I am calling this section Network Tools. And this is going to be three different mods. It's going to be the Intersection Marking Tool. It's going to be the Network Multi-Tool, which contains tons of tools and also Node Controller Renewal. Let's first of all have a look at Intersection Marking Tool. So let's click that icon there. Again, you can see it's got a shortcut. Nothing happens, but now I've got to click on a node. Let's select this node here because we can see that there is a lot going on. Now, all of these lines, these little hashes, this concrete part in the middle is not there in the game normally. This is how it would normally look like. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to clear all the markings in here. It's going to say, are you sure this action cannot be undone? and it's all gone that is how the game would normally look but i can paste these back in and that is absolutely fine there we go so these are drawn in by hand uh, let's apply those so let's find a node where we could add those in Okay, let's take this node over here. So again, I'm not going to go through all the options because this mod is just stuffed full of things. But you can see how very quickly you can take a very blank slate and turning into something that's good looking. <laughs> There we go and very quickly you've got it set up like this as you can see you can copy and paste from one intersection to another you can change the direction so it fits 
uh, the node that you're working on, beg your pardon, rather than intersection. You've got templates that you can save so they can be used again, which is really good. Fillers as well, which you can copy. There's so many options in these things, adding grass, adding concrete. Really, your imagination is the only thing that's going to hold you back. There's so much you can do with that mod. It is amazing. So next in this section is the network multi-tool. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 different mods, little mini mods, all within the same network multi-tool, which is fantastic. Some of the ones that you'll probably see being used quite often is if you've got a lumpy bumpy road. Uh, this one here, set slope mode. Select the start node, select the end node, and it will tell you how steep that road is. That one is pretty flat, but you press enter and that would level it out for you. Let's pick perhaps a better example. Here we go, we're gonna start from here. We're gonna go all the way down to here. Oh, again, that's not too bad, 3.7. We'll press enter. That will just flatten that out a little bit as well, which is good. Let's just say I wanna add a fence uh, alongside this road here. So we can use this option here, create parallel mode. First of all, let's just pick a fence. There we go, the oil industry fence, that will do. So that's the last network that I've clicked on. So now we go back into here and we're gonna go from say there to down here. Excellent, that is right alongside the road. We can use some of the shortcuts that are on the screen there. to so move that exactly where we want it. Then we'll press enter. And there we go, we've now got a nice network along the side that works with trees, fences, all sorts of things. So again, you can start perhaps imagining how this mod is going to help you. Another handy feature is the unlock segment mode. So I've placed down here a fishing harbour. This road is not the same as the road I've got running through here. So I'm going to click on the padlock, click on this road. That is now unlocked. So let's grab this road here. We're going to upgrade. There we go. And then we can lock that again. There we go. Very good. So you can change any road segments that are locked against a building, which is really, really handy. And finally, if you wish to join networks together, um, I'm going to do this road here. I've got this dead end and this dead end. I want to join them together. I'm too lazy to draw it myself. Or if it's a particularly difficult piece of terrain, we've got these options here. So I can select from there to there and that would join it up for me like that. We've also got the create loop mode. And we've also got this one here, create connection mode. Um, so sometimes these will work differently depending on, there we go, uh, what roads you've selected, which way they're facing. But sometimes that can just help you to get a piece of difficult road connected up. Very handy mod indeed. So again, I'll let you go through the Steam Workshop page for this mod and for all the others with the options that I haven't gone through. Because like I said, there is so many. Um, the last one is node controller renewal. Let's find a node which might be worth looking at. So again, select the node. I'm going to delete. So I'm going to have that set as it was before. So this roundabout was here. That road went in. That is how that node looked. So I click on there. I'm now given all sorts of options. Uh, I could set it on a flat or a slope. I'll show you what that does in a minute, actually. I can change the offset for the entire junction for certain parts. You can see that one's moving. I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse. I can change the rotation of the angle. I can change the shift. All sorts of things I can do. I can also reset the whole thing or I can just delete it, get it back to what it was. This is good. Make end straight. There we go. It lines things up. And quite often on a roundabout, I'll just do that and make the end piece a little bit bigger. So the cars, there we go. We'll just straighten that up, make it a little bit bigger. So they can go round the corners a little bit better. Okay, here's an extreme example of a road on a hill. The game always wants to make nodes flat like that. But if we select this node and do this slope option, sometimes it just makes it a little bit more realistic and the road will slope up like that. So that is very handy as well. You can also change the type of node. So we've selected this little node in the middle here. It's selected as a middle, but I might want to make that a crossing. So that's now added in crossings. We can then use another mod like Traffic Manager to add in a crossing light. So we've got those sort of options available to us as well. So at number six, we have what I am calling the Props and Trees mod. This is two mods. This is Forest Brush mod and the Bob mod. Bob stands for Beautify 
our builds, if I remember correctly. Let's have a look at the forest brush first of all. So down here, I have a little icon. Click that, the forest brush pops open. Let's find a piece of land over here. So I already have a brush set up. We can adjust the size. We can adjust the strength. So we pop that down there with a left click, right click. That removes them all. Obviously, the size and the strength. There we go. Spattering of trees. We can put that up really high. Fill that in. We can also click this button here. Toggle the trees panel. So we can see all the trees that were available to us. And if we were going to make a brand new brush... We would click in here, we would name that new brush zero, we would select the trees that we wanted or we might do a little search on here, yeah we'll have that, we can change the density, the strength of each of these, maybe not so many of those, let's chuck in a oak tree as well, there we go, excellent and then we place that down we get the trees that we wanted in our brush. And I've got a couple of different brushes here. I've got one set for beach. So that goes together with the forestry uh, DLC items. Got one set up for conifer. And then I've got my UK one for my UK build as well. Then we have BOB or beautify our builds. So how does that help us? Well, let's just say in our little build here, we're, we're using a lot of palm trees, but some of these other trees that are popping in, we don't really like them. So Alt-B, there we go. The icon on our cursor is changed. So I'm going to click right in the center. There we go. So now if I move that to the side, this is the park that we're working on. Lots of options going on here. So this is showing us all the little props and the trees and the things that our that is in that park. And as I click on them, you can see... It's just highlighting them over there. So this option at the top shows us the props. This shows us the trees. So there's only two different types of tree in there. And this is both trees and props. So we've got the whole list. This is one to keep in mind over here. So let's just say I want to change the trees. Over here, we've got individual trees in this building. So it's every single individual one. This one is all trees of the type in this building. So it's only using two types of trees. So that's all tree number two. That's all tree number three variants. So this button here is all trees of this type in all buildings. So we can either change the trees just in this individual park or select that and it will change all the trees in all of those parks. And as you can see, there's another park and another park. There's four of them here. So that would change all the trees. So that might be actually what you want to do. So we're going for palm trees. Let's have a look what we've got here. Single bent palm tree might be a bit of... There we go. We're going to change it for these really tall ones. We're going to click that and then tree three variant generic date palm. We're going to click that. There we go. So now we've got an overload of palm trees in our parks very, very quickly. So you can use that on any item in your game, which is just absolutely fantastic. And of course, that works with trees, with props, as you saw with pretty much everything. So now we're getting down to individual uh, mods to make it a little bit easier. Number five, we have 81 tiles mod. Number two, so this is a version that works with your plazas and promenades DLC. So as you know, the game normally you're only given a certain amount of squares that you can buy up to nine. There are mods that give you 25, but this one, of course, gives you all of them. Uh, and also, if you go into the options, there we go. We can unlock just the 25 in the middle. We can unlock all of them all in one go. Uh, we can also enable some options here, which is really handy. So enable electricity transmission without power lines if you don't want to put those in. Um, enable along the roads, which is, you know, if you've got that one over there, you don't need that one. Or this one here, water, sewage and heating without pipes. You will still have to actually make the water and make the electricity, but it just takes away the need of using the pipes and the power lines, maybe saving you some nodes. Let's unlock all areas and just give that a second. You might be able to see it jumping away in the background, unlocking all of those squares for us. And that's it. Now everything is unlocked. So we'll go back to this menu here every single square is unlocked we can build anywhere on the map at number four we have the building themes mod now in the vanilla game 
uh, districts have themes that you can put down. So if I just draw a little district over here, I'm in a modded game and have building themes mod on. So you won't be able to see this, but normally you'll have a little drop down box there, which will give you maybe three or four themes that you've got. Maybe you've got the mid-century modern pack and that will be in there. But I want even more power over my themes for my district so i have the themes mod and this will pop open this option here which is your policies but you've got themes on the end and we're just in the garland heights uh, district at the bottom here enable theme manager for this district and click on theme manager and now we get this window pop open and this is where the fun begins the yellow themes don't worry about that it's because in this build i don't have any of my american or uk assets loaded i'll tell you how to do that at the end of the video so stick around um, but some of these are available uh, in this build so let's for instance change this one here to included so whatever is included in these is now going to show up you can hover over and see on the right hand side so i've got a plain us office a plain US industry, a plain US high res that I have set up. I've also set one up for some of the new items. So modern mid-century, uh, modern city center, if you remember that one there. You can make any theme that you like. So let's go for a new theme. We'll call this the one, two, three theme. Create that. So at the moment included, there is nothing. So we can start searching. So if we put that to all, Let's say I want to add some eco buildings. Here we go. I've got eco buildings. So I will click those, add those into my theme. Let's go through what else have we got. So you want to make sure you've got all your le levels covered. I'm going to add some commercial in as well. Excellent. So you can do whatever you like, to be honest. And then we're going to change that to say included. And then you can check over your theme, make sure you're happy with that. And then if you come out of here, it shows at the top. So we can just tick that. And now this district will use the one, two, three theme. Let's just double check that's on there. Yep, there we go. So I've used that on this little test city I've been doing here. We've got the Hemlock Park district and we've got the Emerson Park district. So Emerson Park along the bottom here is using the modern mid-century theme that I put together. So as you can see, we've got a lot of these modern mid-century buildings that are along here. We may have the odd one or two that have popped in that shouldn't be there before I did the theme. But yeah, overall, that's fine. And then in here, I've gone for the plain US industry on there. So we only get the buildings that we want appearing. They're all complaining. Don't worry about that. There we go. So you can really fine tune and tweak the look and the theme of your city. So if you download a load of assets, then you can put them into themes and really make... Uh, your game look exactly as you want it which is fantastic that was number four so at number three is the find it mod now this can really help you when you're using building themes but can just help you in the game anyway it is an absolutely amazing mod so i've got a tab open here it is showing every single network prop tree every single thing that is in the game stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to get in your menus down here and there is just so much of it so you can pick any one of those and place them in the game you then have these menus on the side here you can filter things so i'm filtering just by network you can filter just by trees and you've also got here ploppable buildings growable buildings uh, rico buildings that's another mod uh, that i have installed all of the props that are in the game your decals and also growable slash rico that go together so say for instance you wanted to put a theme together uh, you could come into here if you weren't sure what the names were or anything like that uh, we only want say low density buildings and we only want ones that came from the european suburbia content creators pack so now we can sort this so let's select our extra filter uh, we're going to say that we only want ones that come with a particular dlc or content creator pack and that is going to be the European Suburbia's Content Creator Pack. There we go. Now, as you hover over those, we can get the names. Most of those are called Allotment House or something like that. Most of these have an EU against them. Let's scroll a bit further down. They've all got EU on them. So that helps it to narrow it down, the names, when you're putting your theme together. But also, you can click on these. So let's grab that. And you can place it uh, anywhere in the game like this. So you can literally build and paint your own houses and districts in as you wish 
Also, you might have just downloaded a, a new collection from a certain asset creator. And you can say, I only want to see items from that person. There we go. Arnold J. Rimmer. Lots of handy road signs. I just want some of those that I can place in my game. So let's just, for no reason at all, put a sign here telling everybody that there is a roundabout coming up. I think that's what that one is. Zoom in. Yep, there we go. And just confuse everybody. Maybe you're a content creator or you just like to uh, put some of these tips into practice yourself. What I like to do just before I'm going to play is get a few tabs open and then I might get some items ready in each one that I'm going to use. So I know I'm going to be using carports. There we go. So I've got my carports there. I know in this tab here, I'm only going to be using things from Arnold J. Rimmer. So I'll have those in there. Um, this one, I'm only going to be using things from a certain yep, European thing. And then over here, I only want to see what have we got? Uh, trees. And it just helps me to then quickly jump between these and find the items that I want quickly for building purposes. At number two, we have probably the mod that I use the most, which is Traffic Manager. And this has an amazing collection of mods uh, built into it, or little options built into it to help you manage your traffic, hence the name. Let's maybe show you a couple of these. This one here adds or removes a traffic light. Just left click, standard vanilla traffic light. Uh, the second one along adds time traffic lights. If you control left click, it will automatically set up sort of some basic uh, times on there. You can go through and edit each of these to your will. Watch any of my traffic fix videos uh, to see how to do that. You can also set up some manual traffic lights. There we go. So you can see how you want each of those to work. Uh, we also have here lane connectors. Now, these are very good for situations like this. So I'm going to remove those. So when this road was initially put in, it allowed cars to go that way and also switch around to go up here. But you can manually say, nope, you're only allowed to go there. You're only allowed to go there. Um, you can also do control S and it will automatically set that up for you on many occasions. Let's find a good option over here. So we want our cars to merge in when they're coming out of here and not go straight across because this is a no. They will change lane if they wish. Uh, so control S and it will nicely line it up so they'll flow through that area correctly. You can also manually adjust your lane arrow. So I'm going to click on that segment there. Look at this arrow there. I'm going to say no, you can actually go straight on or right or you can only go right. And this one, you can only go straight on but not left. So again, if you had extra lanes and you wanted to give each lane a dedicated purpose, then that would help you do that. This next option toggles automatic vehicle despawning. Now, if that is toggled on and lit up like that, that is what I call vanilla mode or easy mode. The only reason I call it easy mode is when it's off, it's called hard mode. But that would mean that if loads of cars all piled up, the way the vanilla game works, it would just despawn some of those to ease the traffic. Or if you unselect that, deselect it, it says no despawning, hard mode, bigger traffic jams. That is generally how I run my cities to make things harder for me because I do enjoy the challenge. Down here, we have priority signs. Let me show you how this works on this roundabout. So within the vanilla game, you only really get stop signs um, like this that you can put on or you can toggle traffic lights on or off. Uh, but with this option here, you now have yield signs. So we'll click on that one there. That's going to oh jumpy game. That's going to yield or give way. These cars will as they come onto that roundabout. That means they're going to go straight through. You can, of course, change that to stop or you can just delete the whole thing with the roundabout. If you actually click this little uh, hints panel up here you get this little panel down the bottom and each of these it gives you some information about them but click on this one here control shift click will very quickly there we go set up a roundabout for you there we go one click everybody's yielding coming in and it's set up some other options as well which i can show you on this one junction restrictions so we'll click on that node nobody's allowed to cross over these roads on the roundabout and you have this option here which allows cars to enter a block junction which on a roundabout you want it set up so everyone everybody on the roundabout keeps going but those coming into the roundabout do not they give way they wait so yeah again lots and lots of options there that you can change all over the place toggling crossing on and off yeah that's a big one you got u-turns you've got no right turn no lane switching 
all sorts of options. Then we've got speed limits. Uh, we can select a road here. There we go. I want that road to be super fast. They can go 90 down there for some reason if I don't enjoy my pedestrians having safe uh, places to walk in the city. So now they're going to drive super fast. There they go down there. But you can change that for individual roads or, yeah, all the roads for your city. Uh, this one here, vehicle restrictions. So let's say, for instance, you did not want trucks. Going down here, we can say no trucks. Going down there, there we go. And you can choose every different type of car, bus, taxi, trucks, trash, service vehicles, or ambulances. You can toggle those on or off. The same for parking. Let's find a road with parking. We can turn parking on or off. And then finally, a clear traffic button. So let's find some cars. There we go. If I click this, yep. Every single car on the map has now disappeared they will slowly come back so yeah lots of things you can do with traffic manager some more options as well to keep in mind if we just go into our traffic manager options again just looking at the main thing you can change what your uh, road signs look like so again i tend to switch between uk and united states depending on which game i'm playing simulation accuracy at the moment with plazas and promenades you want that on very high and that will stop cars using your pedestrian roads uh, before i used to have it on medium but and then in gameplay toggle advanced vehicle ai so that just makes how the cars work on the roads better um, you don't want this up too high maybe 20 or 30 percent at the most but yeah set that and you will thank me later because cars will actually start acting like they've got a brain uh, parking ai that is good that will stop cars having what we call in the city skylines community pocket cars where somebody will literally come off a train pull a car out their pocket and drive away now they will actually have to park their car somewhere it's something extra to take into consideration if you've got that on when you go into your traffic view and get your traffic flow no idea oh there it goes jumping up um, when there is a problem with parking, you will get buildings showing up in red. So it's just an extra little uh, game thing that you can do. Again, just beware if you're playing with plazas and promenades and you have big pedestrian areas, uh, people can get a little bit confused. I think that, that uh, parking AI is being worked on. But yeah, there we go. Again, lots of other policies and things that you can tweak to your heart's content. Uh, this is quite a good one under maintenance reset stuck sims and vehicles sometimes if you get a problem in game uh, that can help uh, get everybody moving again but yeah there we go that is a very quick whistle stop tour of traffic manager now let's have a look at the mod that is number one and for this mod i don't think we actually need to be in the game so at number one we are going to be looking at the load order tool mod now imagine you have a certain set of mods and assets for, let's say, a USA theme city. You have a certain set for a UK theme city. And then you have another set for a testing city. Also, perhaps sometimes you like to play vanilla with no mods or assets at all. With the load order mod, uh, load order tool mod, it's very, very easy to switch between them. Let me show you how. Okay, so I've run the load order tool exe. I'm running Windows and this is what opens. And with this mod and with other mods that I've mentioned as well, please, please, please go and read the Steam Workshop page for the in-depth guide. But I will just run through some of the options we've got here in the load order tool to get you started. So I have a certain selection of mods and assets loaded here for this test city that you saw in the background. You can see that some of them are included and some of them are not included they're unticked some are enabled and some are disabled included means it will be included when the game loads if it's not included the game will not even see that mod it's like it doesn't even exist which is good for ones that you don't want loaded because they affect other mods and that sort of thing uh, enabled or disabled well if it's included in the game you can still have it enabled or disabled you can change that list here so I can see all the ones that are included for this mod pack. I can make changes and then I can make a new save. The same with my assets as well. You can see down here I've got 7,000 odd assets. There are only 903 that are included in this test city. And then if you go over here to the launch tab, 
Uh, you can also turn on no assets and no workshop. So you will load the game vanilla with nothing from the workshop at all. You can launch into the main menu, into the asset editor. You can launch straight into a save. It will load the game and then it will start the game. Then it will load a save. And then you launch City Skylines from here. I also terminate City Skylines from here. Once I've saved my uh, game as normal, it just exits, uh, exits the game super quick. But before you do all of that, back in the mod screen, let's say you've got your mods set up exactly as you want them. All the ones included that you want, all the ones disabled that you don't want you then need to go to order reset order so instead of them being say in an alphabetical order like this that's not the best way for them to load when the game starts so we'll go order reset order recommended and we can see that it's going to load the harmony mod first and then it's going to go through the mods in an order that the uh, mod developer has said is the best way to have no errors in your game then you want to do file save settings so now the game knows how to load the mods in that order and then go launch and launch city skylines let's say you wish to load a, a set of mods and assets an xml file that i provided on my discord uh, you can go and check that out the link in the description for my discord or you have an xml for another city that you have uh, we can do it this way so we'll go to file import and this will open up a window here. I'm going to load my mod list for my UK city. So I'm going to select that one and open. Then you will get this box pop up here. I've got no missing items, but if it's an XML that someone else has provided, this could have a list of mods and assets that are missing. You want to subscribe to all of them in City Skyline. So just give that um, a click and then just wait see whether it gets them all loaded again see if any that are missing you might need to do that a couple of times once you get to this point where it says no missing items uh, you want to come down here and click replace i'm going to replace my current list of mods which are these ones here and my current list of assets which i can't click on to show you with this new list so i'm going to do replace it's then going to just run through switching those over and a quick test if we go into our assets and select well big roads were selected they're not in this one it's a uk one let's search for uk and see what is included all of the uk roads are now selected and included so then what you would do again now i've loaded this new xml this new mod pack reset order file save launch the game so let's say you wish to make your own mod pack. So your load up, load order tool. It's going to show everything that you've got. Uh, you can set this as you want. You can tick or untick what's included or discluded, enabled or disabled. Then you want to do a save. So this time we're going to do export. And then this window is going to pop up. We're going to name that one, two, three, test and save. There we go. And just check the name down here. One, two, three, test. That's fine. And then you can start adding things to the Steam Workshop. So let's say this is going to be a Mediterranean city. So I go to the Steam Workshop. I start subscribing to a load of assets and buildings that fit that theme. Then you want to find them in here. So what you would do then is do File, Reload Mods and Assets. It would then just take a minute to run through. There we go. All of the new mods and assets that you've just subscribed to. So we'll wait for that bar to finish. And then you can sort these columns here. So if we click on this one here and go to downloaded, there we go. So this was the 26th, which was yesterday. So I subscribed to some things yesterday, but let's just pretend that's today's date. And I will see all the new assets, my new Mediterranean assets. And I will, if they're not ticked already, I would include all of those and tick those. So that's a nice, easy way to make a new pack. And then when you finally got it set up how you want, you would then do a final export and save it under i would save it under a different name so as you saw with my list i've got numbers on the end so uk city 38 39 40 every time i make a change i save it with a new number so i can roll back to an earlier version if i wish and also i have had problems in the past saving over the top of an xml so i just prefer to do it that way and then again when you've finished you go to order reset order file save and then go into launch and launch city skylines and of course you can jump into where these are if you right click this here it will take you to where it is on your folder on your uh, personal computer and if you left click it will take you to the steam workshop page
So there we go. That was a very quick whistle stop tour of my top mods. If you wish to see me using them, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. As I've mentioned, I've got a UK city, a USA city, and then maybe something new on the horizon as well. I really hope you're not getting seasick. Oh, that's good. We've changed to something else. Good grief. And if this video has been helpful, please leave a like. And any comments below on any mods that you'd like to see perhaps a particular video video on uh, to help you with that then yeah let me know and we'll see what we can do thank you very much for watching thank you for your support i will see you all very soon for the next one have a fantastic day bye bye